Greetings, my drinking buddies. So today, we are going to be talking about the fantasy classic, Harry Potter. And we are going to be designing an original cocktail for each one of the Hogwarts houses. I'm your drinking buddy. <sighs> All right, class, silence in the back. I am Professor Drinking Buddy, and I will be the substitute for Professor Snape today. Um, today we're studying some advanced potion making, and we're going to be making the signature potion for each one of the houses here at Hogwarts. Now, a little bit about me since I'm a substitute. Um, my house is Gryffindor and my Patronus is an Otter. And let's get started first with the, clearly the worst house, Slytherin. All right, for the Slytherin potion, we are going to need three quarters of an ounce of essence of wormwood. Next up, we need some mistletoe dram. We're gonna do a quarter ounce of that. Next up, we need some beguiling bubbles. to the top. And lastly, we need some snake venom. Just a couple dashes. Don't want to make it too potent. Give it a stir. Slytherin potion. Yes, you will know that you have made it correctly when you get a very potent bite of wormwood, anise, mint. It should taste very herbal with, and slightly vegetal. The Slytherin Potion is the first use of the mistletoe dram that I have ever came across that I actually enjoy. Oh, Professor Snape doesn't make them this good, does he? Slytherin potion. Now we shall make the Hufflepuff potion. I have filled up our cauldron with ice and we are going to begin with a quarter ounce of honey, honey water. Quarter ounce of honey water. We are going to do an ounce and a half of spirit of myrrh. We are going to do a couple dashes of armadillo bile. And lastly, we need some moon dew. We are going to need three ounces of moon dew. Let's give it a stir. Cheers. Mm. Uh, honey. Uh, yellow bell pepper, for sure. It looks lovely, tastes lovely. That's how you know you've made it right. If you've mixed these ingredients in the wrong way, it could result in a 
bubbling concoction of disaster. But the Hufflepuff potion, when done correctly, is a wonderful thing that every Hufflepuff should be proud of. The Ravenclaw potion. This recipe dates back hundreds of years and is known for its reliance upon dragon tonic and gives members of Ravenclaw their strength and will. Let's begin with an ounce and a half of calming drought. Nice and purple, that's how you know it's fresh. An ounce and a half of calming drought. Next up we are going to do an ounce of Baneberry. A couple drops of wormwood. And we're going to top it with dragon tonic. Give it a good stir. Fizz on top of the Ravenclaw potion knows, tells us that we've made it correctly. It is sweet, it is bitter. The dragon tonic comes through nicely. We get a hint of that anise coming through. That is what we call a quality potion. Let's make our last potion for Hogwarts. We have saved the greatest house of Hogwarts for last, of course. And we are going to begin our Gryffindor potion with a quarter ounce of camphorated spirit. Next up, we are going to do an ounce and a half of fire seed juice. We are going to do a couple dashes of benzor. We do need some lion fish spine dust. And lastly, two ounces of iguana blood. Give it a good stir. A well-made Gryffindor potion should shimmer with both gold and red colors. the greatest potion of them all for the greatest house in Hogwarts. Oh, certainly the best. I generally am adverse to using camphorated spirits in my potion. However, 
when you use a small amount and it just helps add a little extra bitter note. It's working here. The iguana blood comes in and gives it a nice for fruit forward flavor. Not only is it delicious, but it looks really cool too. Students, your grade depends on you now. Clicking on that like button, hitting the subscribe button, and if you want extra credit, leave a comment down below and tell me which one you think you would like to enjoy. Which Hogwarts house are you in? Have you taken the sorting hat quiz on Pottermore? It might surprise you.